sort of big theme that you're hitting and when is it coming out before we perhaps uh, hit the the so that people have context about your your book specifically this specific project sure the the working title for the book is come with me if you want to live terminator which, uh, is a is a quote from terminator of course um and it's it's a study of nine sci-fi movies dystopian sci-fi movies and how they are predicting the future we're living in increasingly and how if you trace it back the the flowering of 1970s dystopian sci-fi in particular and that really rich period of like serious but still popular sci-fi when it went more mainstream in the wake of planet of the apes 2001 um, was really in particular reflecting new left environmentalism when environmentalism moved from being about conservation which conservatives and republicans could uh support to being more of a critique of capitalism industrial capitalism and and the argument in the book is really that um that caused that helped create the new right the reaganite right the thatcherite right um as a as a well-funded organized project to push back that new left environmentalism and it succeeded and so one of the roles that sci-fi took up was articulating those premonitions of collapse and and that's one of the reasons you get that rich period in in 1970s sci-fi film in in particular that was telling us about the future we're increasingly living in uh, but there's that that weird sense of because we saw it in film we all kind of know it but in another way didn't take it seriously and i and that's really the main implication for the left is how we're living in um what's been called this implicatory denial that we know this stuff but our politics is not reoriented around dystopia and and collapse we kind of we recognize it we're not in denial about climate change or any of the other crises we face but it doesn't really fundamentally reshape our politics whereas i think it has actually fundamentally reshaped the politics of the right you know trump is a is a dystopian president the first dystopian president a recognition of dystopia that and going back to back to the future that's you know it's not the most obviously dystopian sci-fi movie but actually the more you look at it, it is a dystopian sci-fi movie even the first movie which appears like a kind of uh, very reaganite film when you you first look at it it's about how can this middle class small town american family return to material success but even even there the the small town utopia is beginning to fray in the background you know and then the second second movie takes that further i think and really runs with it so that's that's essentially what the book is about um and it's out to publishers and agents at, at the moment uh and i guess one thing i found interesting is like you describe is part of this is uh these movies kind of like predicting um but also and especially you go like the v in like the v like vendetta portion of this is describing it's more of describing reality than it is you know predicting the future you know like if let's look at the material sense of like what's going on the america you know united states largest you know prison population in the world um you know and then like the, the continue and like increase in militarization of policing um all of these things like V from Vendetta is less of like what's looking forward than you know if we actually took an account to what's what's going on around us it might be just like <laughs> what's happening now and beforehand even before we'd got on air we I was talking about how there's this like a, a Turkish AI drone that had it's like had the first completely automated you know kill of a combatant you know and so like that jokes like hey Skynet's coming online <laughs> and you know that's so I guess too is like I guess my question is go even like looking at a movie um like just look up 
where like they're going into the project with the goal of like look you know trying to really face that mirror um i guess the sense is like what is what what do you think is uh I mean, like, what are the results? Is there is 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 there really, you know, like a value or the ability for type of cinema to show people like a clear image of what we're living in? Well, I think, yeah. Well, this is the paradox, isn't it? That um, we've all seen these visions of the future, and they're they're, they're so commonplace um, that in one sense they've lost their power to shock i mean if i you know you think about cyberpunk because i start the book off talking about blade runner and and talking about how that's um that's both a a very cliched now vision of the future which remarkably is for, is more than 40 years old but it still feels relevant you think about how quickly sci-fi dates and yet we have this this uh vision of the future which hasn't Dated. You could show anyone, you know, a, a frame from Blade Runner or any cyberpunk uh, kind of movie, and and they would not only recognize kind of where that came from, but also still think about that as our future. And so I was intrigued by um, why that is still a relevant, prescient vision of our future uh, and increasingly our, our present. You know, why hasn't that aged? And it's because neoliberalism has stuck us in that future and and not allow it was a deliberate project to not allow us any other futures to close off any other futures that were being opened up by um the 1960s 1970s new left and other new social movements so so part of the problem is um the familiarity we no longer kind of we're no longer shocked or alarmed by them, uh, and I and I, I there was a there was a period where we could have changed the future, and that's what those early 1970s dystopian sci-fi films were urging us to do. And then I think, in a way, you can you can say Blade Runner comes at the end of that, made in you know comes out in 1982, but really you can see it as as the capstone of that um, 1970s sci-fi um dystopian trend and says well it's too late now it's too late this is your future and the reason people initially reacted badly to blade runner was because it has no kind of star wars like liberatory project in it there's no one fighting against that future yeah. it says this is it this future is set and but blade runner yeah it's, right. it's a really I, I didn't like it as a kid it was it was really no. dark I don't, dan and I, I don't think you've done a blade runner show have you we've not touched on it yet now are you going to uh it's possible it's possible we're, we're sort of starting to to touch on on movies as uh individual uh episode subjects at this point um blade runner is going to be a, a dense one for sure <laughs> you you know we're around the same age how did you like blade runner as a kid I didn't see it as a kid. Uh, I didn't see it until uh, probably uh, almost by the time I had graduated from college, uh, so mid '90s, late '90s. Uh, so it hits different at that age than it would have hit, you know, if I had seen it, uh, you know, as a ten-year-old or something. Um, I honestly probably wouldn't have been able to pay attention to it at that age because uh, while the visuals are interesting, uh, I don't think I would have been able to follow the story. Honestly, uh, I think it just would have been too slow and not flashy enough. And, you know, where's the spaceships, you know, fighting each other? I didn't see Alien at that age. I didn't see Aliens at that age. You know, those were all movies that I saw years later. I don't know. Maybe my parents had something to do with that. Like, you're not going to like this or this is this is too much for you to, to get. Um, not sure if it just didn't appeal to me. Oh, you're lucky because my dad. Was yeah, like, that's what we're watching. <laughs> it's platoon for you, kid. <laughs> yeah. I, saw, I saw Predator for the first time uh, on vacation at my uh, on HBO at my grandparents' house, and was like, oh, wow. "Maybe I'm too young for this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have seen him get his uh, chest cavity blown open." I, <laughs> I, had, to, I had to watch all that because my dad was like, uh, "I had a weakened dad, and he would do this thing. I don't know." Uh, <laughs> Mark, well, you're, everybody's parents is married on the panel. It's shit. But my dad would be like, we go to the video store, and he'd be like, you can pick one movie, and I'd pick some kid-ass movie, and he'd look at me and be like, no, we're not getting that. So uh, it was like, we're, we're getting, you know, Terminator. 
I was like, all right. There well. you go. We're living that trauma. But we do have a super. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe on your way out. You can catch the live stream of This Is Revolution every Tuesday through Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific time and Saturday, 9 a.m. Pacific time. This is Revolution.